I don't ever restrict books from my kids. These are all of the books. It's about a little girl who doesn't really feel like she has a place. My students cried when we read this book. This book has amazing illustrations. It's great for questioning. He thinks he's not good enough. He's very excited to make new friends. Everybody has a place no matter what you look like. Hey sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. I have to keep this intro short because I already know how long this video is going to be. As you can tell by the title, I asked my students, my first grade students, to tell me their favorite picture books. And this is what they said. These are all of the books that my first graders said when I asked them what their favorite picture books that we read this year were. So each of my students picked a book, they agreed on a lot of books, and we added a few extra books because we just couldn't leave them out so without further ado let's get into them if you are someone who is new to teaching or coming into teaching or your student teaching or really just any teacher trying to build your classroom library I highly recommend these books I totally agree with all of my kids choices if you are somebody who is trying to build your classroom library I know it can be frustrating because picture books are not cheap you guys you would think but they are absolutely not. So please don't feel like you need to go on Amazon and buy every single one of these new. If you're like me, I do like my books new, but there are tons of other ways for you to get books. You can make a wish list on Amazon and have people donate to you. You can also go to thriftbooks.com. You can buy used off of Amazon. You can go to McKay's. You can go to Goodwill. There are tons of places where you can get books that are not gonna be brand new, but they're still gonna work. I also wanna throw in that these are books we read together as a class, but after I read a book to my kids, they know they can read it, they can access it, they can look at the pictures, they can read it to a partner anytime they want. I don't ever restrict books from my kids. I think the fact that we read these books together as a class and then they could go ahead and revisit that book and explore on their own really helped them to develop the love they have for books. Also, these books are not in any particular order. They're not like organized by category or anything like that. These are just the books that my students told me they loved. I'm gonna show you the book and show you inside of each book as well, but I'm not gonna spoil the endings for you guys because I just not. The first book I want to mention is one you've seen me mention before if you watch my videos, and it is What Should Danny Do? This book is really cool because it's an interactive book. So your students meet Danny, who is actually a superhero, but his best superpower is the power to choose. The book guides you through nine different endings, and the students actually get to choose how Danny ends his day. They get to see the consequences of Danny's choices. It's a really, really great read. Highly recommend you pick this up. The next book is Be Kind. This is a book we read towards the beginning of the year. It's really great for that because you and your kids can kind of explore kindness together. It's a really sweet story about two little girls and it's kind of one of those books that feels full circle. Next up is Fish and Snail. My kids loved this book. Fish is brave, snail is not, and Fish wants to jump into a new book. It's really, really cool. You kind of get in the imagination mode with your kids when you read this book, but you get to kind of go with them on a journey about friendship and trying new things, and your kids will really enjoy it. Next up is Jabari Jumps, and Jabari is a little boy who's going to the pool and is going to jump off the diving board for the very first time but of course he needs to work up the courage to do that this book was really really great we actually compared the story of fish and snail to jabari jumps but my kids read this book over and over and over again the next book is eraser and the drawings first of all are so cute but it's about a little girl who doesn't really feel like she has a place she doesn't really feel like she has a strong sense of worth and some mean things are actually said to her but you can probably guess what happens in the end really really sweet book um, from a new and unique perspective next up is island born we read this more towards the end of the year it's a really long story but it's a really good one so it tells about a little girl who was born on an island but she moved when she was a baby so she doesn't remember it's all about her going through talking to her family trying to learn about her culture and it really shows you inside of her mind the pictures are absolutely stunning and my kids thoroughly enjoyed it next up is the word collector and this is another one of those books that we read 
towards the beginning of the year, but my kids constantly revisited it. It's about a little boy named Jerome who loves collecting words. He loves the way they sound, the way they look. I think it's an especially cool book to read with first graders because they're now discovering, you know, words that they can read and they're falling in love with words too. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this book. Next we have The Water Princess. This book is actually based on a true story. There are real photographs in the back of the book that show the village that the story is based off of. But my students cried when we read this book. It follows this little girl who lives in Africa and it basically talks about her journey that she has to go on every single day just to get clean water. The next book is The Other Side. If you're not familiar with this book, you need to get familiar with this book. It is phenomenal. It talks about two young girls, one who is African American and one who is white, um, and they live next door to each other. But during this time, segregation is currently going on. So these two little girls can't really be friends in society, but they find a way to navigate their friendship. This book has amazing illustrations. It's great for questioning, but you need to read it to your kids for the story. Next is The Day You Begin, actually by the same author. So this book is really, really great because all of our students are different and it talks about how you don't need to feel lonely or left out or isolated from other people just because you come from a different culture because the thing that's best about you is that you are like no one else. Next is Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, and you guys saw me talk about this in my Valentine's Day vlog. It's about this older man who lives a very routine, boring, lonely life, but all of a sudden he gets a valentine, his entire mood is lifted and changed, but he finds out the valentine was not actually for him, and I'll just let you guys read the rest on your own. It's a really sweet story, and my kids cried when we read this one too. Next is the book Rot, the cutest in the world. This book is adorable. Um, it's about a little potato who thinks he's really cute and he goes to enter the cutest in the world contest and he sees his competitors and all of a sudden he tries to be like them because he wants to win and he thinks he's not good enough. And there's a surprise ending, of course. Um, my kids had a really, really fun time reading this book and also it shows his butt too. So you can imagine with first graders. <laughs> Next is Not Quite Narwhal. This was so much fun to read with my students. Um, it is about a little unicorn who, you know, in the first part of the book, you see him with the narwhals and he thinks those are his family. And then he sees unicorns, or as he calls them, land narwhals. And he decides to go live with them for a little while. They teach him things. Um, and then he's really torn on where he belongs. This book was so, so sweet, um, especially with my first graders. They are the perfect age for the magic. And it was just wonderful. Highly recommend you pick it up. Next is Boot and Shoe. This is one of those books that I picked up because I thought, oh, it's cute, we'll give it a try. And my kids ended up being obsessed with it. It is about these two dogs that were born, you know, into the same litter. They've done everything their whole life together. And then they kind of get separated. And it's really, really cool to walk through their emotions during this. This is just one of those books that just made my students laugh. And it's really fun to read if you actually have twins in your class. Next is Journey. This book is really, really neat. So it's actually a wordless picture book, which I had a couple of in my class, and they're really, really great for your classroom too. It's about this lonely little girl who has a magical red marker, and everything that she draws comes to life. So you get to go on a really, really cool journey with her. This is actually a trilogy, so there are two other books after this one, and my kids love them all. This one is hilarious. It's called We Don't Eat Our Classmates and it's about a little T-Rex whose name is Penelope and she's going to school for the first time. She's very excited to make new friends, but she eats them. This book made my kids laugh the entire time and there is a hilarious twist at the end. Your kids will love this book. Next is Stick and Stone. This is a very simple book about friendship. My students loved it. You can tell by the pages they read it over and over again. A lot of my students who didn't necessarily feel like they could read gravitated towards this book because they knew it and they liked it um, but yeah it's just a really cute story about a stone and a stick who are friends next is guess again this book is just a fun book to read with your kids my kids begged me to read it over and over again it has a fun rhyme scheme that your students think they can guess what happens when you turn the page but it ends up being something completely silly and different and it's a lot of fun this book is called The Big Umbrella, and The Big Umbrella is really just a metaphor for Earth and how everybody is welcome. Everybody has a place, no matter what you look like, where you come from, what you like to do, um, and my kids really enjoyed it. 
Next is the sandwich swap and it's about these two young girls who are best friends but they bring a different lunch every day because they come from different cultures and they're judging each other's lunch and it ends up putting a divide between the two girls they end up having an argument but of course they come together in the end it's a really really sweet book this book is used for so many different activities but overall it's a really great story and message about not judging other people and really seeing things from someone else's eyes Next is Grumpy Monkey. This book, my students just had so much fun with this book. I actually read this when they were being little grumpy monkeys themselves, so it was really funny um, because it kind of talks about the different things you do when you're grumpy and how to realize that and how you can resolve that. It is just a really fun, entertaining read about a grumpy monkey. <laughs> Next is The Most Magnificent Thing. This is about a little girl who loves to create things and one day she decides that she's going to create the most magnificent thing, but it's definitely not as easy as she thought it was going to be. There's lots of trial and error in this book. A lot of people use it for STEM. We did when we were teaching STEM, but my kids really, really enjoyed it. And you really get to see inside of her feelings and what she's going through as she kind of goes through this process of creating the most magnificent thing. Next up is Happy Dreamer. We read this book when we were, you know, at the very end of our year and we were kind of dreaming about what second grade would be like. Um, so this was a really good book to get those things started. It celebrates how, you know, you can dream about things in so many different ways and there's no one right way to live or to be and my students really, really enjoyed it. Last is Unplugged, and my students thought this book was hilarious. It is about Blip, who is attached to her computer all day, all night. Does it sound familiar? And then all of a sudden she gets unplugged and is thrust into the real world and her whole little world is changed. So it's obviously a really good conversation starter about being on electronics too much and needing to get outside. It's really fun because you can kind of see like the emotions that Blip is going through throughout the book and it's just a fun light read that you can do with your kids. All right, you guys, we made it to the end. Those were my first graders' top picks for picture books. I am telling you guys, they have really good taste. If you haven't heard of any of these books before, I really recommend you guys check them out. Make sure you like this video if it was helpful so other teachers can see it. Feel free to share it. I am really, really appreciative of you guys and all of the support you've given me. A lot of these books were actually donated to my classroom by you guys, which is so, so special. So if you saw your book, please leave me a comment down below. I really, really appreciate you guys and I hope you have an amazing year.